Hey guys, Break here, and today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the new expansion, World of Warcraft Shadowlands. In particular, I'm going to be talking about why I think it's pretty much Legion 2.0, and why that's potentially not such a bad thing. So it was a bit of a strange one for me. When I first saw the cinematic trailer, I was of course really hyped. Now I'm not that big on the lore, but seeing the whole Sylvanas, Lich King thing, and then the whole sky opening up, that was really, really cool. But then when we got the whole features trailer, I really wasn't that excited by it. In fact, I was fairly underwhelmed and I was like, well, what new things are they introducing? It doesn't seem like they're trying to fix many of the problems in the game. And it seems like they're just playing it very, very safe. So I was fairly disappointed. However, then watching Ian explain it all in the big 45 minute panel for the Warcraft that he just finished, I was much happier after he explained everything and the kind of direction the game was going, it did make me feel a lot more excited about the expansion as a whole. So like I say, I think this expansion sounds very similar to Legion, but just an upgraded version of it. So they have this whole Covenant system, which is pretty much like the Order Hall system, it seems. But instead of being aligned to your class, here you can kind of choose which Covenant you're in. And then you can sort of unlock different things with your covenant and it sounds like you'll have a little sort of home area within your covenant you can probably teleport to or something. It sounds pretty much like the order hall system but there's a few more different rewards you can get and a few more cool little abilities that you can unlock so it's basically an upgraded version of the order halls. And there's this whole soulbind system which sounds kind of like the heart of Azeroth or like the artifact but without artifact power, it seems to be more sort of cosmetic-y and unlocking actual physical abilities, which was very much similar to the artifact system in Legion. So again, just seems like an upgraded version of that, which I like. There is then this more system, which sounds a little bit like Suramar from Legion. It's kind of a zone which is really, really difficult. You can die lots, just like you did in Suramar. It's actually a hard endgame zone. So I'm excited by that. And then there's this Torghast solo kind of hall thing, Torghast Tower of the Damned, which seems to be a bit like the Mage Tower, at least I hope it is. Apparently it's very difficult content, which you can do solo, which was exactly what the Mage Tower was. But it seems like a bit of an upgraded version again, because you can unlock all these different abilities in it, and it's kind of endless, and there's loads of different interesting things you can do. And you can even do it with friends, not sure how the balance of that is going to work, but still, just seems a pretty fun thing that they've added. There's a lot of dungeons, eight dungeons to start with, and a 10 boss raid, so that's quite exciting, I'm pleased with that. And finally, they are bringing back different things such as legendaries, but they're reducing the RNG on how to get them. So it seems to me that the team that worked on Legion, maybe there was a different team who were working on BFA uh, when Legion was out, and then the second the team finished on Legion, they just immediately started working on this Shadowlands expansion. So maybe there's like two different teams working on different expansions. And that could explain the whole reason why it seems like every other WoW expansion is good and every other WoW expansion is bad. So we had the BFA, which was the bad one. We had Legion, which was the good one. We had WOD, which was the bad one. Mop, which was, you know, fairly good systems wise. So now we really should be onto the good one, considering BFA was one of the bad ones. And you can kind of tell because it's very similar to what we had in Legion, but just upgraded and they've changed a few of the RNG systems, which I'm really pleased with. In terms of what I think of more of the specifics, I'm not really going to go into the zones. They're just sort of leveling zones, same as ever. It's interesting. You can't choose which zone to level in this time. You actually have to go through one by one and I think that's actually better because it means the story makes sense and they can do sort of a better story than what they can if you're just doing random zones at random times so I'm pleased with that just like the order hall campaign in Legion there is a new campaign for each Covenant a bit like the war campaigns again from BFA I'm not really that keen on these they're just random quests they don't really seem to offer anything Hopefully if they make them actually exciting it'll be cool, but otherwise it's not something that I'm personally interested in. One thing I am a bit confused about are these two points right here. So it says we have an endgame progression system, this soulbind thing, and they also keep talking about anima, 
which they mention quite a lot. So there seems to almost be two things we're collecting. It's, it's not very clear, but there seems to be this whole anima thing, and then there is this whole soulbind thing. But they're then saying that there is no artifact power to grind, but surely we are going to be grinding this soulbind, or you know, we're going to be grinding something. I presume what they mean is there's going to be no excessive grinding like some of the hardcore raiders do for artifact power. Now since I'm not a hardcore raider I never did the whole super hardcore grind for artifact power so again it doesn't really affect me but I'm sure for those method raiders they're going to be very pleased they're not going to have to ground, grind out a thousand dungeons or whatever, a thousand islands. Again like Legion you kind of build up your covenant similar to the class halls or to Suramar which is a nice bit of progression I suppose. And a bit like you could purchase those things in your order hall in Legion. Here you can have these cloaks which are really quite cosmetic. And they do seem to be doing a bit of a shift towards cosmetics in this Shadowlands expansion. Which we'll talk about a bit more later. And I really like that. I think the way WoW's going, cosmetics is one of the things they really need to improve on the most. And instead of grinding out sort of artifact power, why can't you just grind out cool things to make your characters look better? That would make a lot more sense. So... I'm uh, I'm pleased they're adding those. There's going to be a Scourge Invasion before the Shadowlands expansion, so that's very nice. And they are doing the level squish, which everyone kind of thought they might do because it was getting a bit ridiculous with the whole level 120, 130. So they're squishing everyone down to level 50, and then you grind up to level 60 during Shadowlands. So the end level is going to be 60, just like everyone has in WoW Classic. So that will make things... Uh, a bit more simple and once you get to 60 you go and pick your covenants which again is kind of like your your order hall which one you want to be in and it sounds quite cool because classes get specific abilities depending on the covenant now i hope there isn't just a really powerful one for each of the class so in every guide it's going to say what's the best covenant for your class i mean it will end up being like that because guides always look to min max so that's going to be interesting how they deal with that they're going to have to really try and balance them out because otherwise every warrior is going to be in this one covenant because uh, this one covenant has the best warrior ability that it gives you but if they manage to balance it that'd be really cool and it will give a bit of depth to the game really imagine being in a pvp arena you see you're fighting against a warrior but then you don't actually know what the abilities the warrior will have because depending on the covenant they could have different abilities and then when you actually when the doors open the arena starts you then have to kind of try and guess what covenant they're in say i don't know if there'd be some cosmetics that kind of suggest it or maybe there's an add-on which says what covenant they're in i don't know and then that would give you an idea of the ability maybe i'm thinking too much into it but i think it does add a bit of extra depth and a bit of extra choice for players which is really exciting and actually i'm really looking forward to that and i mean the more the one thing i really wanted from this expansion is tough solo content and tough leveling content they haven't really mentioned about tough leveling content but this does seem like a tough solo content like you're actually going to die a lot and this Tower of the Damned, you can actually go in solo. Like I say, I just don't know how they're going to balance. Like, surely it's either going to be better to do it solo or it's going to be better to do it with friends. Probably better to do with friends, so there's just no point doing it solo. What I really wish they would do is have two different kind of versions. So there's like a solo version if you complete a certain number of levels, uh, a bit like the Mage Tower. Then you get a cool title, a cool transmog. And then there's the kind of group one, which is more sort of hardcore competitive and they have different sort of systems for that so hopefully they'll split them up and that will kind of balance it out and make it a really fun thing to do whether you enjoy playing solo or you enjoy playing with your friends it's going to be really good so obviously this channel is mostly about gold making and it's good that professions are getting a bit of a look in now the thing that they said here about the whole crafting armor you want the stats that you want you have to keep making the pants over until you get it I don't know if he was talking about BOP gear here because this is mostly for the BOP gear, you know, the really high level gear that you can craft uh, in BFA, but you can't actually sell it. And you really want certain stats on that, but sometimes you get the wrong one. So hopefully this system works for BOE gear as well. And if it does, that's going to make a whole lot more depth again to professions, especially to gear professions, because then you can look and see 
right, uh, these crit haste pants sell for so much more on the auction house than the versatility pants. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure I craft these crit haste pants and I'm going to put them up for twice the price of the versatility pants. And it's just something that, again, adds a bit of depth, makes you think a bit more about the profession. And that's something that I did really want. So I'm really happy about that. If it does work for BOE gear, not just BOP gear. And yeah, the whole armor crafting profession is more relevant at in-game. Again, I just hope that you can actually make some cool gear to sell and not just cool gear to uh, bind on pickup, which it currently is in BFA. Then they go on to talk about the whole reducing the RNG. I mean, if they did want to reduce the RNG and if they wanted the biggest cheer of the night, the biggest cheer of the entire BlizzCon, all he would have had to say is, we've removed Titan Forging, we've removed War Forging. And that would have solved all the problems. They're obviously not removing that, which is a shame. However, they are trying to slowly make it a bit better. So, for example, your weekly chest, you're going to get five or six options to choose. So there's still a bit of RNG, but at least you get to choose which one. But then again, even if you get these five or six options, I'm guessing they can still Warforge or Titanforge. So even if you pick one and then it doesn't Warforge, you're still going to be disappointed. So... Does this really make much of a difference? Probably not a whole lot. It will be a lot better if they just removed Warforge system entirely. And one thing I am excited about is the legendary system. So again, coming off of Legion, the legendaries were kind of fun because they changed your character, which is good, but they were just annoying to get and really RNG. So this way you can kind of choose which legendary to go for and then work towards it. And I think that's a really good system. If you're like a really keen raider, then you can just get the one that gives you the most DPS and work towards that. But if you're a PvPer maybe and they work in PvP, you can go for that. Or if you're just a solo player and you want one that's going to help you do your world quests, you can work for that. Go get a fun one. And that's really good. I'm, I'm really excited about that because I actually did like the legendary system in Legion. I just wasn't that keen on the RNG. Then there was this whole thing about returning to class identity as opposed to spec identity. I mean, the, the specs that I play are like Resto Druid, and obviously you can't really have a Druid identity that much because I'm a healer and all the others are like DPS. So for me, I'm not really that bothered about that, but hopefully if they can, you know, make classes a bit cooler again and more specific again, that would be nice. There are some spells that I really wish they'd still return to Druids that they haven't, so hopefully we might get some of those. And they did say they would be uh, returning quite a few of the spells that they removed, so that's exciting and then there were all these updates to the leveling so like I say level squish but also when you level up from 50 to 60 each time you should get something new which is good it's one of the things I love about leveling in classic you get something you get a little talent point or whatever each time you level up so that's going to be exciting and they did make a lot of comments about alts and how it was going to be easier to level up alts and you could have more choice for alts and the alts would contribute to your end game character Basically, they're going to make alts a thing again, uh, which is nice because I do play a couple of alts. And for people who play a lot of alts, it must be really annoying right now. So making the whole alt experience a bit easier and actually contributing to your end game is, uh, is going to be beneficial to most people. And then finally, there's all the cosmetic changes that they're doing, which again, I'm not overly bothered about, but they do at least look quite fun. They've got some really realistic looking character customization. Uh, they're letting death knights be played as any race and all of that so that's all good and those are all the positive things uh, about the expansion pretty much all the positive things apart from the whole kind of chess thing which i don't think is that great because it's just the same system just giving you a slightly better options but they could have done a lot better with that but overall those are the positives it's like legion 2.0 i liked legion and I like these changes, so in theory I should like the expansion and I'm happy with that. However, I think they could have done more. I was really looking for some kind of wider changes or some sort of quite extreme additions to the game which would have got people excited. There's nothing really big, this expansion, that's getting people hyped, which is a shame. For example, every other expansion, they've always introduced a new class. So in theory, they should have introduced a new class this expansion, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't even introduce a new race. I mean, obviously, they're adding races all the time now with the allied race, 
which is fine. But again, it just take away from the whole. You know, it was a really big hype. It used to be getting a new race, but now races are just all about cosmetics, and they don't really matter that much. So it's a bit of a shame. There's no race or no class. I was surprised about that. I really thought there would be at least one of those two. And then I did really want them to do something kind of big, like player housing, guild housing. How often have people been calling for this? I mean, this whole new order hall covenant system, it's, it's not really player housing at all. It's not. It's just an order hall for, you know, that you can choose. So that is something that I wish they would do, and they've really missed a trick, I think. It wouldn't be that difficult to do. Every other MMO seems to be able to do it. And just make it a guild hall so it was social and you could get a load of cosmetics for it. It would just be so good. So I am really disappointed that they didn't do that. And whilst they've slightly changed direction, they didn't do a massive change of direction. Which after the success of Classic, again, I thought they might do. I thought they might just suddenly say, right, we're going to make all questing really hard. It's going to take you sort of 50 hours of gameplay to get from level 50 to 60, if not more. You know, just something that would make leveling relevant again make it exciting make you have to group up with people just like classic that's one of the highlights of classic for most people and i'm i'm just surprised they didn't do that and of course the final thing my wow come on go <laughs> they don't have pokemon go for wow yet which means i won't be able to make crazy gold with all my pets but uh, I mean, <laughs> that's not something really important. But again, I'm just surprised they didn't do anything major. There's nothing major this expansion, which after the kind of failure of BFA, I really thought they would try and pull out, but they just didn't. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. Please let me know what your thoughts are. Overall, it's basically Legion 2.0. They've taken most of the systems from Legion and just improved upon them. I really like Legion, so in theory I should really like this expansion. I am disappointed they didn't do anything extreme or major to sort of change things up. Uh, didn't add a new class, didn't add a new race, uh, didn't really change up the whole sort of RNG. They tried to make it a bit less RNG, but they didn't really change things. And they didn't add anything super cool like guild or player housing, which I really wish they had. And I think they've really missed the boat on that one. And Hopefully next expansion we can start uh, praying for guild player housing. But like I say, overall it does look a lot better than BFA and it just looks like a more refined system and maybe that's a good thing. I think changing everything, every single new expansion means they can never really make the systems good until the very sort of end. So now at least hopefully we can have some actual good systems which makes sense and which can be improved upon very quickly to make a sort of uh, really nice game moving forward. Anyway, that is my thoughts. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see ya.